Hello, Holes Chapter 16. Here we go. As Stanley entered the rec room, he could hear X-Ray's voice from all the way across the room. See what I'm saying? X-Ray said, I'm all right. Am I right? Or am I right? The other bodies in the room were a little more than bags of flesh and bones dumped across broken chairs and couches. X-Ray was full of life, laughing and waving his hand around the way the end. out. Stanley made his way across the room. <laughs> Slide on over a squid, said X-Ray. Make room for my caveman. For the caveman. Stanley crashed on the couch. Oh, he had looked for the hidden camera in the shower. He hadn't seen anything and he hoped the warden hadn't either. Yo, 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 what's the matter? Said X-Ray. You guys got you guys got tired or something? He laughed. <laughs> hey, keep it down, will you, grown zigzag? I'm trying to watch TV here. Looking for an inferencer. What can we infer about one of the main characters here in this chapter? What can you infer, inferencers? Awesome job. So. One can definitely infer that, uh, in particular, X-Ray is extremely happy, ecstatic, excited that he didn't have to work. He just enjoyed his, his off day, right? And uh, definitely trying to rub that in so we can infer he enjoyed his day off. Stanley glanced uncertainly at Zigzag, who was staring very intently at the busted television screen. The warden greeted the boys at breakfast the next morning and went with them to the halls. Good morning! Four dug in the holes and three tended to the wheelbarrows. Glad you're here, X-Ray, she said to him. We need your sharp eyes. Stanley spent more time pushing the wheelbarrow than digging. Because he was such a slow digger, he carted away the excess dirt and dumped it into his previously dug holes. He was careful not to dump any of it into the hole where the gold tube was actually found. So real quick, my predictors, what do you predict is going to eventually happen? We keep, we keep on hearing uh, Stanley making reference to the actual hole. What do you predict is going to happen? He can still see the tube in his mind. It seems so familiar, but he just couldn't place it. He thought it might have been the lid to like a fancy gold pen. KB. KB. KB could have been initials of a famous author. The only famous authors he could think of were Charles Dickens, William Shakespeare, and Mark Twain. Besides, it didn't really look like the top of a pen. Hmm. And so by lunchtime, the warden was beginning to lose her patience. Ooh. She made them eat quickly. Let's go, let's go! So they could get back to work. If you can't get them to work any faster, she told Mr. S she told Mr. Sir, then you're just gonna have to climb down there and dig with them. After that, everyone worked faster, especially when Mr. Sir was watching them. Stanley practically ran. Practically ran when he pushed his wheelbarrow. <sighs> Mr. Sir reminded them that they weren't in Girl Scouts! All right, guys. So now at this point, I want to hear from a questioner. What would be a great question to ask now? They didn't quit digging until after every other group had finished. Later, as Stanley spat, scrawled across an understuffed chair,
chair, he tried to think of a way to tell the warden where the tube was. Really found. Hmm. Without getting himself or X-ray into trouble. It didn't seem possible. He even thought about sneaking out at night and digging in that hole by himself. But the last thing he wanted to do after digging all day was to dig at night. Two. Besides, the shovels were locked up at night, presumably so they couldn't be used as, like, weapons. Mr. Pedansky entered the rec room. Stanley? He called as he made his way to him. His name is Caveman, said X-Ray. Oh, uh, Stanley, said Mr. Pedansky. My name's Caveman, said Stanley. Well, I have a letter here for someone named Stanley Yamas, said Mr. Pedansky. He turned over an envelope in his hands. It doesn't have caveman anywhere. <laughs> uh, thanks, Stanley asked. Stanley said, taking it. It was from his mother. Who's it from? Squid asked. Your mother? Stanley put in his big pocket of his pants. Now, aren't you going to read it to us? Give him some space, said X-Ray. If Caveman doesn't want to read it to us, he doesn't have to. It's probably one from his girlfriend. Stanley smiled. So now on the top of this page, on the second paragraph, we find the word presumably, presumably, uh, vocabulary wizards, what do you believe the word presumably might be? Remember, read the sentence before, within, and after, and then identify those content clues and what do you think is the meaning? You read it later, after the boys, of uh, the other boys had gone to dinner. <sighs> Dear Stanley, it was wonderful to hear from you. Your, your letter made me feel like one of those other moms who can afford to send the kids to camp. I know it's not the same, but I'm very proud of you for trying to make the best of a bad situation. Who knows? Maybe something good will come out of this. Your father thinks he's real close to a breakthrough on his sneaker project. I hope so. The landlord is threatened to evict us because of the older. I, I just feel sorry for the little old lady who lived in that shoe. It must have smelled awful. Love from both of us. Uh, what's so funny? Zero asked. Startled them. Oh, you thought Zero had gone to dinner with the others. Uh, nothing. Just something my mom wrote. What'd she say? Zero asked. Nothing. Oh, sorry, said Zero. Well, you see, my dad is trying to like invent a way to like recycle old sneakers. So the apartment kind of smells bad uh, because he's always cooking these old sneakers. So anyways, in the letter, my mom said, that she felt sorry for the little old lady who lived in the shoe. You know? Because it must have smelled bad in there. Zero stared blankly at him. So what might be a great question to ask at this point? You know, the, the nursery rhyme. Zero said nothing. You heard the nursery rhyme, right? About the little old lady who lived in the shoe? No. Stanley was amazed. How, how does it go? Asked Cyril. Didn't you like ever see Sesame Street? Stanley asked. Zero stared blankly. 
Stanley headed on to dinner. He would have felt pretty silly reciting a nursery rhyme at Camp Green Lake. All right, so finally we're gonna hear from our summarizers. If somebody can please tell me the beginning, middle, and end main ideas. What do you think is the beginning, middle, and end main ideas? And three simple points. All right, and with that, we are done. Congratulations, let's go ahead and do our novel study.